from tofluency.com. And welcome to today's live lesson. It is to Fluency Friday, which means at the moment, I'm giving these live lessons. So today we have a lot of things to go through. I've got a lot to teach you. We're going to talk about the US election. Now, if you want to learn more about the words and phrases used for the US election, watch the conversation that my wife and I had on this subject. But we're also going to look at some key grammar points today. Things like causative verbs, the passive voice. And at the end, I've got a very interesting difference between British and American English when it comes to an idiom. It's a very strange difference. And when I heard the idiom in American English for the first time, I thought, hmm, I don't think that's correct. And I think this is a case where British English wins, okay? But first, before we get into all of that, welcome to this live. We've got people joining from around the world. Let me know where you are watching from in the live section. And I just want to put things too, if I go over here. So yeah, today's lesson, we're going to look at predictions, to talk about predictions in the, in the past. We're going to talk about causatives and passive voice. We'll have a little quiz as well. Um, and then I'm going to answer questions. Now, like I said before, there's also an idiom that we're going to look at where we talk about the difference between American and English. Okay, so let's go back to this. We have people from, are you ready for this, Slovakia? Leicester, Latvia, Poland, Barcelona, Japan, Chile, Peru, Greece, Chile, India. So we have two people from Chile. Um, Rio, Brazil, Nepal. Wow. A lot of people watching from all over the world. Morocco, Palestine, Chile, Leicester again. Although, yeah, same person from Leicester. Um, and yeah, just a couple of other things before we start. Let's do this what to do, smash that like button, or you can simply click it once. Um, click the join button to become a member. So if you want to become a member of the Tefluency channel here on YouTube, just click that join button, and then watch more lessons as one. Now the live chat is going crazy. We have Bangladesh, Portugal, Sicily, Cuba, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, France, Indonesia, Russia, Russia, Thailand, Russia, Sweden, Russia, Iran, Russia, Russia, Trest, um, Argentina, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Sweden. Great to have you all here. Great to have you all here. Okay, so the election. Whew, crazy, crazy. I've been looking at some of the, the stats on the election. One thing that I found interesting was the average American lost 25 minutes in sleep on election night. Now, I stayed up, this is a phrasal verb, stay up, I feel about 11.30, but then I thought, you know what, I can wait until the morning. And then I woke up in the morning and thought, okay, who won, who won? But no one has been declared the victor as yet. I'll have a quick look to see what the media is right now. This is on Friday. Um, just no, no winner declared yet. Um, although Biden's team are celebrating, but it looks like it's going to be Biden. And this news, it looks like, okay. So from, from the evidence, it seems like, it looks like it is good. Now my prediction, if you are interested, I'm going to share this now. So I predicted the friends, and I predicted a draw, a tie, 269 to 269. Now this still could happen. This still could happen if Biden wins Georgia and then Trump wins the rest. But I predicted 269 to 269. Now, speaking of predictions, I think Biden will win at this stage. Biden will win at this stage. This is when we can use think with either will or going to. And the next one is, I think Biden is going to win at this stage. I think Biden is going to win at this stage. Another is it will be co contested. It will be contested. Now, this means when things are contested, 
um, that they're going to really just talk about it or there's going to be a lot of discussion. Trump is going to say, no, I won. Biden says I'm going to win. It's going to go to the courts. It's going to get quite crazy. It will be contested. You can also say it's going to be contested. It's going to be contested. So will or going to think. I think Biden will win at this stage. I think Biden is going to win at this stage. Um, but one thing is that I've got election fatigue. I've got election fatigue, which means I'm a little bit tired about the election because it's been going on for such a long time now and we don't have a clear winner. So I've got election fatigue. Let me know what the connection is like. Um, how is connection? Let me know in the chat. My stats are saying that it's not the best today, which is strange because normally it's perfect. Um, so I might just need to make a little change somewhere. Uh, hopefully it is working okay, but l let me know in the chat if it's working okay. I turned the Wi-Fi off. All right. Now, you'll hear people say things like, I hope he wins. Okay. This is interesting because we can use hush. a big difference is hope and wish. You'll hear people say, and this is not, I'm not saying this is my um, prediction or my, but you can say things like, I hope he wins or I wish he had won. I wish he had won. So the hope here is saying that what you want to happen, the wish is to change the past if you want to change the past. So I hope he wins. Um, I wish he... It's a great little difference here. So there's quite a lot there we've gone through already. Let's go back to the stream. I'm not sure why the connection isn't working so well because I have really fast internet, but um, hopefully it's okay for you all. If not, well, I'll have to record some more of this last. But I think everyone has a little bit of this election fatigue where they just want to know, you know, that it's going to be fine that and, and that it's not going to turn into something that people don't want to see. But we're going to see what happens, okay? Um, people are saying the connection has been lost again. I'm sorry about the connection today. I have no idea why it's not working as well as I want Let's just see if I can change something in the stream or the output. Yeah, it should be okay. Should be okay. People are saying a bad connection now. Yep. I'm not quite sure. Um, now question. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, it says, what do you think about wing states? Oh, do you mean swing states? Yeah, so swing state is one of those that could go either way. It could go for Biden, it could go for Trump. Um, it's interesting because some of them have been not very swing states. They have been um, for Biden, been for Trump. Others have gone um, into that territory. But again, it's just one of those things. Need to wait and see what happens. And you'll hear people say, a big theme at the moment is to count the votes which is a strange thing to say really, but you know, cause it should be obvious that you want to count the votes, but that seems to be the, the whole thing at the moment, you know, count the votes to count the votes. Okay. So let's go back to this. Someone says, don't use Wi-Fi. It's always slower. Um, yeah, I turned Wi-Fi off today, but normally when I turn Wi-Fi off, the speed is very, very fast. What I'm going to do is just exit some of my um, programs that I have up. Maybe the computer that's slowing it down. Let's see. Not to stream health. Okay, that should help it. All right, we have um, people watching live. If you could just click the like button and if you want to help me a little bit more, what you can do is share this lesson too. Click that little arrow button 
and then share this with your friends. Today, what we're going to do next is look at some different types of verbs in English, which I think people use in every day, um, but not a lot of people learn about these. And I'm not sure why, but maybe you've learned about these, maybe not. But the um, E is that we can learn these verbs and learn the phrases so that you can use them in everyday English. So let me get back to this. Um, I'm going to just change one thing before I start that. And I'm just going to change the bit rate on here to, let's do 6,000 instead of 11. That should help it. Okay. All right. Just give me a couple of minutes before we get started and then we can get going. Yeah, the connection. Don't know why. I moved to this new office as well so that the connection be, could be really good because I wanted fast connections, a fast connection so that um, people could just watch along and I know it's going to work really well. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Akin says, I smashed. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's get started now with these different verbs. I'm going to show you a picture of somebody. Okay, so this is um, David. David is a very rich and successful businessman, okay, in New York. And you can tell he's doing very well in his life because he's got this suit on and he's drink drinking whiskey in a car. So somebody is drawing him. Now, David is very successful and he likes to get people to help him. So he likes a lot of help in his life. He, he works long hours in his office and he's a successful business person. So it means that he doesn't have a lot of time to do other things. He has to get people or a lot of people help him, um, help him in his life, like we said. Now, someone says this man is an alcoholic. No, he just likes a little bit of whiskey to work. But you can think about all the different things in his life that he has to do or if he gets help in his life. Now, you might hear people say stuff like this. I need to mow the grass. All right. I need to mow the grass. Or my wife says, we need to mow the grass. We need to mow the grass today. We need to mow the grass today. It's important. But if someone else mows the grass for you, you can say, you can use causative verbs. And causative verbs include verbs like have, let, make, and get. For example, this is the first phrase I want to show with you today. I need to have the grass mowed by tomorrow. So you can imagine David here on the phone to his personal assistant and he says, I need the grass mowed by tomorrow. Now think of this a little bit like the passive voice because look at this, mow the grass, mowed, the, or, or the grass mowed, the grass mowed. I need to have the grass mowed by tomorrow. So what we're doing here, we're using, I am, um, I need to mow the grass, but instead we're saying, I have the, ma the grass mowed. So we use this a lot when we want someone to do something for us. Another example, you might hear people say, yesterday I cleaned my house. I cleaned my house. I spent six hours cleaning my house. I cleaned my house. Very simple. Now you can also say a cleaner cleaned my house. A cleaner cleaned my house. But in every, it's more common to hear, in the past I had my house cleaned or I have my house cleaned in general. I might just change that just to make it congruent. I had my house cleaned. So this is when someone does this for you. I had house cleaned. I had my house cleaned. Another example, 
the barber is cutting my hair next week. The barber is cutting my hair next week. Where we're using it, this in the active voice. It's very active. It's incredibly active voice. But this isn't that common. You say, I'm getting my hair cut. I'm getting my hair cut next week. So this is another example of a causative verb. It causes something to happen. I'm my hair cut next week. Now, this is a, just a, a separate thing about this one. We're using get in the continuous form because we're talking about something that is happening in the future. It's an appointment. When we get our hair cut, normally we arrange a time with, with the hairdresser to say, can I come in on Thursday at three? And they say, yes, yeah, sure. So you say, okay, it's in my diary. It's an appointment. I'm getting my hair cut next week or on Thursday at three. You can also say, I'm going to get my hair cut next week. If you don't have a specific time, I'm going to get my hair cut next week. This is a great example. Um, now, another example is this. This is a bit of more of a longer sentence where you say, can you make the cleaners do the bathrooms next time. So David speaks to, this is David. David speaks to his personal assistant and says, I wasn't happy about the bathroom. The cleaners didn't clean the bathroom. Can you make the cleaners do the bathrooms next time? Can you make the cleaners do the bathrooms next time? This is a really good example because it's quite a long sentence. Can you make the cleaners do the bathrooms next time? And we're using make as well here because it's a causative verb. All right. So, um, yeah, this is a great, um, great example of the causative verb. I'm going to give you some more examples. David also wants to go out with his wife. So he's on his way home. He's drinking his whiskey. I don't know if that's a, if that's legal in most states in America. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. He's drinking whiskey in the back of the car. But he calls his wife and he says this. Can we have someone watch the kids tonight? Can we have someone watch the kids tonight? So we're using a causative verb have. The next verb is watch. And we, we've got someone in the middle, the, the object here. Because can we have someone watch the kids tonight? Which is great. But he says there's some rules for the babysitter. Don't let the kids watch TV. Don't let the kids watch TV. Now, you might see this as well as a verb pattern, where verb patterns could be... Um, for example, I enjoy doing something. I stopped to, to do something. Don't let the kids watch TV. Don't let the kids watch TV. So this is a great example of this causative action where you're saying to the, the babysitter, okay, whatever you do, don't let the kids watch TV. They watch too much TV during the day. Don't let the kids watch TV. And the next one is um, a very simple one in everyday English that people say is, I need to get the car fixed. I need to get the car fixed. Again, we're not focusing the, um, we're not focusing on the person who is fixing the car. We're focusing on the action. I need to get the car fixed. I need to get the car fixed. You can say, I need to get my hair cut. I need to get my hair cut. I need to get the car fixed. So those are all causative verbs. I'm just going to go through them quickly again. We, I need to have the grass mowed by tomorrow. I had my house cleaned. I'm getting my hair cut next week. Can you make the cleaners do the bathrooms next time? Can we have someone watch the kids tonight? Don't let the kids watch TV and I need to get the car fixed. Now, if you're watching live, leave some examples in the comment section. If you're watching this in the replay, 
then please leave them below. And then if you enjoy this, please like and share it with your friends. Okay, so yeah, if you're watching live, please leave some comments below just so that you can have some more examples for everyone to see. And it means that you can practice your English at the same time. So Doran says, I need to get my car washed. Um, Raquel says, I had my room cleaned, which is great. And, and soon we're going to look at the passive voice in a different way, which is going to show you some really fun examples about when you don't want to tell people that you've done something. And I think this is really good um, practice for you. Amelia says, I shared with my husband. That's fantastic. Can I have someone make me some coffee? Susanta, that is fantastic, that one. Okay, this is a classic, you know, somebody who is in a powerful position to say, hey, can I have someone make me some coffee? Can I have someone make me some coffee? Clothes, okay, good. I need to get my clothes ironed. I need to get my clothes ironed. I need to get my homework done, good. And in that example is where you're doing it yourself. I need to get um, my homework done. A lot of these examples is something for you, but that's great. I need to get my phone fixed. Um, I have my hair cut. See, um, I need to have a new haircut. I need to get some groceries. Fuentes. Um, today's my birthday. Please send me a greeting. Well, happy birthday. I hope you are having a wonderful day so far. Okay, let's go back to this now. It seems that the connection works better when I'm on the keynote, when I'm on the presentation. So I'll stay on this for a little bit longer. So this is the passive voice, all right? So we're gonna look at the passive voice now and we're gonna have some fun with this too. Now, let me just, one second, I'm just going to actually I'll break and I'll see if I can fix this connection issue. Okay, I'm back. I'm not sure what is happening with the connection. Um, again, I apologize. Uh, I like the song, Armando says. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna do questions at the end, okay? So first, what we're going to do is look at the passive voice. And here's a picture for you. This is a very important picture here. And I think what we can say this is, is a muffin muffin okay now it could be a, a little cupcake but let's call it a muffin and just out of interest this is also called a muffin tray so we have a muffin tray here um but th this is what we have it's a muffin tray and what do you notice about this picture what do you notice about this picture there are no muffins left there are no muffins left um, now, what you can say here is imagine that you come downstairs and you, you make muffins. You come downstairs 
and you see the muffin. You say, oh, someone ate the last, someone ate the last muffin. Or you can say, the last muffin has been eaten. The last muffin has been eaten. Now this is more common and we the passive voice for, for two main reasons. That the passive voice is always used when you want to put the emphasis on the object instead of the subject, okay? So the last muffin has been eaten. You can also say that has gone. If you just want to use it in the, the present perfect, but the last muffin has been eaten. Now in our house, when the last muffin has been eaten, there are who might have done this. It might be me, maybe my wife Kate, or maybe the children. But in most cases, it's this guy, our dog Toby. When the last muffin has been eaten, it should be when you, somebody leaves the muffin on the counter and he grabs it. This is the guy who normally eats the last muffin. Using this when we don't know who has done it. We use, we use the passive when we don't know who it is or it's not important who it is. Um, but a lot of the time it just means that we're putting the emphasis on the muffin and not the person who ate it. Now, here's a great example, I think, of another time when you want to use a passive voice, okay? Now, oftentimes in the morning, if I get up first, Kate, can you bring up a piece of chocolate? Or she'll say, can I have a cup of tea and a piece of chocolate? Now, sometimes she asks this, the chocolate, is not there. I can say, I ate it all. I'm s I ate all the chocolate. There is no chocolate left. I ate all the chocolate. That sometimes happens. I ate all the chocolate. But I don't say it like this because it's, it's a little bit strong. It's a little aggressive. Instead, I say, it's been eaten. The chocolate has been eaten. And I say this because I know I ate the chocolate. So by saying it this way, she might not ask who ate the chocolate. She might just think, oh, maybe I ate the chocolate. So you can do this when you don't want to admit that you ate all the chocolate. So instead of saying, I ate it all, you can say, it's been eaten, it's been eaten. And she might say, by who? And I say, it doesn't, that's not important. It's not important who ate it. Here's another example. A parent comes downstairs and says, oh, what? There are children playing and the parent sees something and says, what happened down here? And the child, hmm, the lamp has been broken. The lamp has been broken. And this, well, who broke it? Who broke it? The child says, is that important? Is that really important? Does it matter who broke it? Does it matter? Again, the parent says, what happened down here? What happened down here? The parent sees the lamp. It's broken. The child, oh, the lamp has been broken. In the passive voice, the, bro the lamp has been broken. The parent says, who broke it? Well, who broke it? Charles says, is that important? Is that really who broke the lamp? Does it matter? The lamp's been broken. It doesn't matter anymore. So we, we, you can see how we can use voice in order to not admit something, to try and just say, no, it's not important who did it. The only thing that matters is that the chocolate has gone. The lamp's been broken, you know? It doesn't matter that the muffin's been eaten. Let's move on, let's do something else. So you can use a passive voice to then not admit that you did something. And it's usually done in a fun way. It's not normally done in a way that, you know, is, is evil or is wrong or bad. 
It's usually done in a fun and jokey way. So yeah, the lamp's been broken, the chocolate's been eaten. I'm sorry, it's been eaten. It's gone, it's been eaten. Okay. <laughs> what I want to finish on now before questions is this idiom here. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. Now you might hear people say this about the, for example, they might say, someone says, oh, who do you think is going to win the election? You say, oh, I couldn't care less. Which means you, you don't think it's important for who wins. It's not important to you who wins. I couldn't care less. It makes sense in terms of the way it's written. I couldn't care less. I don't care and I could which means I have absolutely no feeling for this. I couldn't care less. But in American English, they say this to mean the same thing. I could care less. I could care less. Now, isn't that interesting? Because means I could care less. When you think about this idiom, what it's saying is, actually, I do have more about this. I do have more opinion about it. I could actually care less about it because I care about it. So this is just such an interesting idiom for me where people say this, I couldn't care less. I could care less. This, in my opinion, this is when I say, this is correct. This is correct. This doesn't make sense to me. So in American English, you'll hear this, but you'll also hear a lot of Americans say it, I think the right way, I could less. So that's an important difference. You're gonna hear that American English on TV shows and elsewhere, um, but it's a good difference to know. Okay, so um, again, the, the connection is not very good. I'm just gonna go break again before we do questions and see if the Wi-Fi is going to be better. Okay, I'll be right back. I am back. Yeah, the connection again, I've tried to, to fix it, but it's still not working um, very well. Hopefully it's gonna stay with me a little bit while we do the questions and answers. So it is time for questions and answers. Okay, so if you have any questions about learning English, then just leave them in the comment section below. Um, I'm just gonna say here for questions and answers. Maybe it's a YouTube problem today. Um, I'm not quite sure what is happening, but um, yeah. You know what I can do? I can test my test internet connection. Do a speed test. Let's see, go. Well, the, the download speed is lightning fast. Okay, lightning fast. Upload speed. Yes, it must be. Must be the it must be um, YouTube. Must be YouTube. All right. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you can, um, no, it's not the internet provider, the problem. It's, um, I think it must be YouTube's problem today because I've just tested the speed and it's really fast. Um, and also my computer isn't really struggling a lot with it. So what we'll do, question and answers. Um, let's do questions and answers. Let's have a look. I'm pretty good in speaking, but my pronunciation is horrible. Any suggestions? Yeah, definitely. Go back to my last lesson, as I gave a free lesson on, on this, and it talks about how you can improve, you can take. So definitely go back to the last lesson and take a look at that to see what it's like. Uh, people are saying the connection might be because of the election. Yeah, and I think over the last few days, people have found it difficult to upload videos and, and YouTube hasn't been working too great. So I think that is definitely part of it too. Um, it's, yeah, definitely an issue. 
Are you British? Yes, I am. Um, I'm American too. I live in the US, but I, I um, grew up in the UK. Is the weather good there? So, right, last week, it was 30 degrees during the day. And then the next day, it was three degrees during the day. It was amazing. Part of it was because of the, the hurricane. But yeah, it was quite astonishing, the, the difference in weather. So um, I've just found it very interesting that it was like that. But no, the, the weather's been great. You know, um, it's just recently. Hello, Jack. Thanks everything you do with your helpful channel. I really enjoy it. It's helped me a lot. Greetings from Mexico. Thank you so much. Your, your pronunciation is really excellent. Thank you. Uh, could you explain in the huckleberry, please? I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not sure that, that seems quite American. Could you explain to bite the dust? Bite the dust. Yeah, in this case, just have a look. Um, I always like to just look it up myself. Bite the dust. Um, be killed. So, or fall to come in the end. So they might be using this in the election. So she hoped the new program would not bite the dust for lack of funding. So yeah, it's used a lot in business, you know. We're gonna finally bite the dust with this. Bite the dust. Um, how can you give us more private classes? I don't give private classes. I do have a program, however, um, here, which you can check out. And this is a great way for you to um, improve your English. Is that okay to say the last muffin was eaten? What is the difference between has been and the verb? Yeah, great, great question. So you can say um, the last muffin has been eaten. If you're given new information, so you come downstairs and you say, um, oh, the last muffin has been eaten. Who has done it? But if you say an hour ago, the last muffin was eaten, that's it in that way. The last muffin was eaten when it happened, let's say an hour ago. So it depends on how you want to describe it, how you want to explain it and what time expression you are using. How can I think in English if I live in a Hispanic country? It just means that you have to surround yourself more in English and to you know do more things in english that way your environment turns in an, into an english speaking one instead of a um a spanish speaking one lolly says british english american english canadian english um can i listen to difference yeah I'll, I'll, i'm going to save that for another lesson to do the accents i'm going to actually practice a bit this week with accents and see if i can uh, do them all right because of the connection i'm going to end the lesson a little bit early. um it's a shame that it's been such a uh, 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 lesson that hasn't been working very well but thank you all for for being here i've got coming next week which is going to be on um how to get more speaking practice i'm currently editing that video i'm going to finish editing the video this weekend i'm going to do more on instagram more quick videos okay so that you can learn quick phrases on instagram if you want to follow me go to to fluency on instagram if you want to support this channel then become a to fluency youtube member today just click the link in the description or click the join button and you'll get some perks for doing that. I set plan for English fluency. Check it out. There's a link in the live chat. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. It's been my pleasure um, teaching you today. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'm going to go live again this week. I'm really excited for it. And yeah, I'll speak to you all soon. Okay.